Uh, hello, everyone. Um, uh, myself, Rishabh Moore, and I'm a final year PhD student in Purdue University, and I'm working with Professor Arezu Ardekani. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for such a wonderful uh, uh, mini symposium, uh, and also all the speakers uh, for like nice talks. Uh, so today I'll be uh, talking about effect of stratification and and fluid and and inertia uh, on the dynamics of a single swimmer or 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 the interaction between uh, between a pair of swimmers. So uh, to start with, um, if we look at the upper layer in oceans, uh, these these are home to uh, plenty of organisms whose like size ranges from mic a few micrometers to uh, to a few millimeters or in, in some cases like big fishes and will, whales, they are like a few meters long. Uh, so as a result, uh, their Reynolds number also ranges from zero where uh, we have viscous dominated regime to, to a few hundreds where we have inertia dominated regime. And most of these organisms, they, uh, they reside in this upper layer where we have plenty of uh, sunlight and plenty of nutrition. Uh, and, and if we, focus mainly on uh, phytoplanktons and zooplanktons uh, and other small scale organisms. They, they basically come in a different variety of shapes, sizes, and they, they use different mechanisms to uh, move. Uh, and one such mechanism is, is the presence of cilia and array of cilia on their surfaces. Uh, so for this talk, I'll, I'll be using the ciliary kind of motion as a, as a model. Uh, and another important characteristic of this upper layer is, is the presence of vertical density gradient. It, it can be due to uh, the presence of vertical temperature gradient or, or salinity gradient or, or, or a uh, mix of both. So it becomes important to uh, see how, how this uh, stratification and also the inertia, it affects the motion of, of these organisms in these upper layers. Uh, so, uh, uh, it, it has been seen that there are these large scale uh, phytoplankton and, and algal blooms, uh, which, which uh, scale um, like a few kilometers horizontally and, and also the dial vertical migration of these microorganisms, microorganisms where they routinely have to uh, cross this uh, stratification barrier to reach uh, this nutrient rich, rich regime. So, so the questions that I'll be try to answer is, uh, uh, what might be the possible mechanisms behind these blooms uh, and, and horizontal accumulation of these organisms and how, how stratification will, will affect this dial vertical migration of these organisms. So uh, the uh, uh, choice of uh, mod model for the swimmer is, is, is something called a squirmer model. Uh, and uh, it, it, this, in this model, the microorganism moves by this, by the presence of this uh, oscillatory uh, surface velocity field on, on its surface. And depending on the ratio of these two constants B2 by B1, which is called beta, we can um, classify them as pullers or, or pushers. So a positive beta is a puller, a negative beta is a pusher. Uh, and if, if even if we look closely at the flow field around this um, organism, so for a pusher, it, it seems like the pusher is trying to push the fluid around it uh, in front and behind it so that it can propel forward. And on the other hand, a puller seems like it is uh, pulling the liquid which is behind and in front of it to its side uh, so that it can move forward. And, and this model is uh, has been used a lot uh, throughout the years to model, motion, model the motion of organisms and study various uh, uh, phenomena such as their swimming speed in Newtonian or non-Newtonian fluids, the nutrient uptake by these um, organisms, uh, also the interactions between a pair of organisms in, in a homogeneous fluid at uh, uh, various Reynolds number, also by also to study mixing by swimmers in, in oceans, uh, dynamics uh, and rheology of swimmer suspensions, also the inertial effects of um, inertial effects on on their swimming and. Finally, this has also been used previously for studying uh, stratification effects. So this is a, a continuation of all these studies. Um, yeah, so the governing equations are simple. They are Navier-Stokes equations uh, and advection-convection equation for the density. Uh, 
uh, and we we assume these swimmers to be neutrally buoyant and assume that their density changes as they move uh, so that it matches with the background density and the important dimensionless parameters here are uh, reynolds number uh, which which gives us the importance of uh, inertia fruit number uh, I'll, I'll mostly be using richardson number which is a combination of reynolds and fruits number so richardson number is a major of um, fluid stratification uh, and and parental number uh, so yeah so before uh, going on to the results let's just look at what 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 will happen uh, if we first increase the inertia of the swimmer so so these blue arrow, arrows they show the uh, velocity field induced by these the swimmers near their bodies uh, at, at a previous time step which is this solid body so let's say at a later time step uh, somehow this uh, swimmer gets perturbed from this uh, original straight line motion then you can see the flow field induced by it, uh, induced by a puller at a previous time step it tries to uh, further push 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 this puller away from the uh, center line so so as we increase inertia a puller becomes unstable in the sense that it uh, strays away from the straight line motion uh, but on the other hand for a pusher the uh, effect is completely opposite and uh, it is pulled towards the straight line so it is uh, always stable even at higher inertia uh, but now if we have uh, so this was in in a, in a homogeneous fluid but now if we include uh, fluid stratification then this um, as 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 you can see the the puller it tries to pull this heavier uh, fluid into a lighter fluid so actually the effect of uh, then because of buoyancy this uh, pulled packet of fluid it tries to goes to its uh, original um, position so so the effect of stratification is basically to oppose this uh, uh, this uh, this perturbation uh, in the flow field by the swimmer so it's it's the same for a pusher as well uh, so uh, so stratification basically it tries to uh, stabilize a puller uh, while it tries to destabilize a pusher which is shown by these uh, representative arrows here so as we increase the effect of stratification uh, a, a puller becomes stable uh, and, and a pusher it, it might become unstable uh, and since the effect of stratification is to oppose the flow field induced by the swimmers uh, we can expect uh, the the swimmers to to slow down so that's uh, exactly what we see from our simulation results and uh, where uh, where these uh, these plots plots show the uh, swimming velocity of swimmers uh, normalized by their swimming velocity in in a homogeneous fluid at, at the same given reynolds numbers so for both pushers and pullers we observe that their uh, swimming speed it decreases inversely with with the richardson number uh, and or, or stratification so this has also been observed experimentally where uh, where here the small s means uh, a weak stratification and a capital s means a strong stratification so as we increase the stratification uh, they have uh, seen that the uh, vertical descent speeds of these organisms it, it, it decreases significantly uh, and and that that the reason why so as the swimmers they move and and they encounter this stratification layer their their speed uh, sign actually de decreases significantly and as a result they if if the stratification is strong enough they cannot penetrate this layer and get get stuck uh, stuck here and and that might lead to uh, their accumulation uh, again so as i mentioned uh, puller is uh, is uh, it becomes unstable as we increase its Reynolds number. So this is for Reynolds number 50, and this blue blue curve is is a homogeneous case. So they basically stray away from their uh, straight line trajectory and even get deflected in the horizontal plane. But as we increase the stratification, uh, as you can see, it it becomes a puller becomes stable even even at this high inertia, um, and a pusher is uh, eternally stable in a homogeneous fluid even, even if we increase its inertia but then as as we increase stratification its swimming speed decreases and and at a high enough stratification it again strays away from the uh, straight line trajectory and becomes unstable because of, of the uh, strong stratification effects and this is depicted nicely in this animation so a, a puller in, in a weak stratification or a homogeneous fluid it becomes unstable while 
you know strong stratification it it, it is stable and follows a straight line path and and the effect is opposite for a puller uh, and we also came up with this nice phase diagram where uh, uh, where the open symbols here show the stable cases and and the closed and the field symbols are uh, are unstable cases so as you can see for a for a puller which which is the uh, lower half um, as as we basically increase the stratification it becomes uh, stable which is divided by this dashed line while on the uh, other hand for a pusher as we increase the stratification it it might become unstable at a very high, very high stratification strengths uh, and moving forward another uh, nice uh, another reason to why why this happens the uh, stability of these swimmers it, it changes can be um, found by by looking at these uh, vorticity bubbles so as as the puller swims it has this vorticity bubble behind it at at high reynolds numbers uh, while for a pusher that vorticity bubble is is in front so as we increase inertia this vorticity bubble the size of this vorticity bubble increases for a puller which uh, basically obstructs the convection of uh, vorticity uh, downstream and and that's the reason it becomes unstable but now as we increase stratification you can see the size of this vorticity bubble it's it's reducing and as a result the vorticity can convect uh, easily downstream and hence it becomes stable but on the other hand for a pusher the vorticity bubble it is in front and as you can see its size uh, increases drastically as as we increase the stratification and this again uh, provides uh, obstruction for the vorticity convection and makes it unstable uh, and moving forward if we look at two swimmers they are moving opposite each other and, and colliding so uh, pullers they have these closed loop trajectories in a homogeneous fluid and they get trapped near each other but uh, if we if we have uh, a strong stratification then uh, then actually they get they they don't get trapped near each other but collide and get separated uh, from each other with with the angle of separation it, it reducing with increasing the stratification uh, but for a pusher uh, a pusher it, it gets separated in a homogeneous fluid but as we increase uh, as we increase the stratification it after after a strong enough stratification it uh, they they collide and and they kind of stick together and get deflected in this horizontal plane and, and that's uh, basically related to their in, the instability of each individual uh, pusher at, at high, high stratification uh, another important parameter to look at is is the contact time of of, of these swimmers as they uh, as they collide in a uh, uh, collide in a strati stratified fluid so with increasing stratification we see that for both pushers and pullers the contact time increases significantly so this this uh, this indicates that stratification might uh, help these uh, organisms if they are reproducing sexually it might uh, help them to spend more time near each other and uh, can increase their uh, chance of their success uh, so yeah so to conclude the important parameters are reynolds number and richardson number which tell us the importance of inertia and and stratification so if we if we have let's say pushers and pullers of two different sizes and they are trying to swim in in these upper layers so since they are like neutrally buoyant whether they are swimming down or swimming up it does not matter so so if if they are small in size then that means their uh, reynolds number uh, is is very small and 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 they are actually stable and and they they can basically pass this stratification uh, layer here but if we increase their size then a puller puller so if we increase their size they they um, see the effects of stratification more strongly and their velocity reduces drastically and 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 also they can become unstable which which might lead to their trapping uh, in this um, horizontal layer and which might then lead to their accumulation uh, so yeah so the combined effect of inertia and and, and stratification is that uh, on, on the stability is that inertia tries to destabilize a puller but 
stratification stabilizer is uh, and, and inertia uh, stabilizes a, a pusher but uh, stratification destabilizes it uh, and yeah so stratification increases the contact time and, and also it uh, reduces the swimming speed and which which might lead to trapping of bigger organisms which has also been observed uh, previously so yeah that's it and I'd, I'd be happy to take any questions thank you that's the first uh, that's really perfect timing <laughs> so thank yeah uh, uh, yeah let's uh yeah let's let's first uh, thank our speaker uh okay so uh any question if you have a question you can you can just uh yeah so either raise your hand in chat or, or you can just unmute yourself Uh, I think sorry, there's... Ask, uh, oh, so, so I don't know how to raise hand when you are co-host. Um, ask a question. So stratified um, strat stratification, the, the, the fluids, is it uh, anisotropic? It, does it have preferred direction? Yeah, yeah. It is uh, actually vertical. It is in the direction of gravity. So, yeah, it is, it is vertical. And um, how does it enter uh, the, the stress tensor? So uh, it does not enter the stress tensor. So actually, um, so if you look at the governing equations, uh, yeah, so we, we basically use business approximation. So we assume that the, uh, the perturbations or, or variations in density are only important in this body force term. So the stress, it, it depends on the, so it might enter in the pressure. So the, the hydro, hydrostatic component will change around the swimmer as because the density is varying, but, but, it's, uh, uh, but it, it enters this flow field kind of indirectly. So it's, it's like not a direct uh, relation between stress and the density variation. Oh, so, so stratification just for storms. Yeah. Okay, uh, pressure and, and basically the body force. Thank you. Uh, there's actually one question in the chat. Maybe you want to read it uh, from uh, Christy one. Which organisms induce polar pusher flow fields at finite Reynolds number? Um, so there are like, uh, there are examples of uh, bacteria and, and uh, paramecia. So, so there are some paramecia with they have uh, these ciliary um, uh, or, organs on on their surface. So there are a few examples with their like the, the, with their size. Uh, the Reynolds number become becomes important. Uh, I don't uh, and and also this uh, squirmer model is useful for uh, wall walks actually, which is kind of a spear and also. Um, has the ciliary uh, org organs on, on its surface. So in some cases, depending on the viscosity of the fluid, uh, the, its, its Reynolds number can also become important. Uh, Kirsty, if you want, you can just unmute yourself and uh, ask the question. Uh, I, I guess, thanks for the answer. Um, maybe the, I, I think in, in for ciliates and volvox, it's still very small. Um, yes, yeah. Even, I mean, you can't really reduce the viscosity, right? Uh, right, right. It's already water. So yeah. maybe, I guess some other phytoplankton. Yeah, so actually, yeah, the squirmer model is kind of for uh, zero Reynolds number, but recently uh, researchers are, are trying to extend it to like higher Reynolds number and just see what, just use it as a model and see what, what will happen if we have uh, finite inertia as well, which, which might be uh, uh, the case in, in some, some special cases. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other question? I have, a, I have a quick question if I may. So, uh, Rishabh, I think you said um, the, you, you, you basically match this, the swimmer's density to its environment locally. Right, yeah. So, so typically organisms have a slight density difference with their environment, right? I mean, it's maybe on the order of maybe 20, yeah. 30, 50 kilograms per meter cube. 
Uh, what do you think might happen when you account for that? Yeah. So, um, so, so this model is so actually there are some organisms which can do this and transfer with the with their surroundings and they they can um, change their density so that is it matches. But it it's not true for all the organisms as you mentioned. So if if that is the case, then they will have a a, a density difference with with the surrounding fluid, right? So depending on whether locally that density is higher or lower, there will be an extra buoyancy force on them. So if locally their density is let's say higher than than that uh, uh, horizontal level, then there will be extra force on them, which is in the downward direction, and uh, they will sink. Uh, but if their density is smaller, then the buoyancy will be in upward direction, and they will uh, they will rise uh, un until they they actually come to a level where their density is equal to the surrounding fluid and, and that is called the neutrally buoyant level and they will basically start to decelerate as they come closer to their neutrally buoyant level and, and finally stop there unless they, they have some uh, uh, mechanism to uh, to propel them. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, so if you have more questions, so you can, you can type in chat and uh, so, so, so uh, yeah, so for, for uh, speaker. Uh, so yeah, so right now we need to move on to the, to, to the second talk. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, let's uh, thank you again to, to, to more. Hi. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, Dr. Moran. Uh,